Yeah. And do you have a strategy? Um, Cause I'm interested to know, like I've seen you perform in different sets. Yeah. I've seen you on stage with, 30,000 maybe plus people watching <laughs> just you as you're yeah. playing your set. Is it that big? Breakout? Is that what you're talking about? I'm telling you, I is don't know 30, if it is that big, but it looks Regardless, like 30,000. I know what you're saying. It, feels it looks like, like 30,000. Yeah. I, I think that's a bit, <laughs> that's a lot of people, but like, no, but I get what you're saying though. Yeah. I'm, sorry, continue. No, okay. So I'm just trying to be humble here. And <laughs> I'll explain it in this sense because we, you can watch some of these festivals from different perspectives. You could be backstage listening to the, aud the audible, you yeah, know, the, yeah. The, the crowd, or you could be way in the back of the, the festival mm -hmm. looking at the stage and yeah. seeing the crowd and seeing the interaction seeing the crowd move from one side yeah. to another just yeah. off of a beat yeah and the power of the dj is a very strong power i must say and you know seeing somebody like you it looks like thirty thousand people is what i'm trying yeah, to say no it feels like it definitely like you just lose count you just know it's a lot of people yeah but yeah. um what i mean to say is you know different settings you know be going from a stadium um, or an arena or, you know, something yeah, similar yeah. to what you've done to being in a small, intimate space. Mm -hmm. um, is there a strategy you have when it comes to picking? You know? Well, it's just all about reading the vibes, right? So, I mean, I've been DJing for like over 10 years now. Yeah. I'm sound like a real old head, you know? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, Maybe believe then. it or not, I started when I was 14, right? So That's you do crazy. the math. Yeah. Um, Talk about that. Like what got you started, if you don't mind. Yeah. So I guess like my earliest memory of like being inspired to DJ was like, it was the 2010 Olympics. Really? You know how they had the, um, there's a lot of music. Uh, like David Lamb Park was a whole um, like music thing. Well, I like Dead Mouse played. Yeah. Um, Damian Marley was there. Like, it was a whole, like every, I would say like every night because it was a two week span, right? Like the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Or I guess it would be like a month because they had the Paralympics as well, right? Right. Okay. So yeah. it's like, but anyways, point is like, Every night it was different things going on, and I remember Dead Mouse was like really, really popular back then. Mm -hmm. And he's like Canadian DJ, and uh, just like electronic music was like really getting mainstream, at right. least in Canada, right? I know mm -hmm. it's been like more so like in the UK and stuff. That's Canada like, just started to pick up. Yeah, on it. pick up on it a little more, and um, I yeah, man, I just wanted to get DJ, and I was like, this is so cool, right? And I started with electronic music. Like, yeah, I, I was in, I grew up listening to like radio music and i mean there was hip-hop on there kanye and yeah like good life kanye you know yeah, graduation yeah. came like there Your was standard, some pop yeah. so there was like things i listened to hip-hop but i was like diving in as like an electronic dj when i started right right and uh, i had like cdjs so it was like an old like the club setup yeah and they were actually the first turntables that took cds right okay as before that i think it was only usbs or something so this was on some like peak technology right. kind of like at that time so you hit you hit like um because there are certain eras like even in music in particular where there's yeah. certain eras that are key eras or the key yeah, year yeah. when things started to change yeah like and when i started i didn't have a laptop set up like it was literally we burnt cds wow and you had the beat match Oof. like and <laughs> trust me like it was pretty tough, you know? Like, I was like, what the heck? But because it was house music and that sort of, you know, like, four on the floor, like, gridded right. music, mm -hmm. it, it was, like, in a sense, a little easier to kind of, like, line things out because you know when it was in. Right. You know what I mean? You know what's about to play. Like, you probably have played that same disc a certain amount Yeah, of time. and you just kind of get used to it. But shortly after, you know, I, I was just research and i was so in love with the whole like dj thing that like, oh you can plug your computer in. i didn't know that like, you can right. buy this interface and mm -hmm. i mean i just completely self-taught right just going on the internet trying it, buying it right doing it plugging you know yeah just trial doing and that. error and then like next thing you know i'm running tractor and i'm downloading songs i'm not using cds anymore yeah and just as i've gotten older the technology's gone better and it just it is what it is right now, right you know? So yeah, no, and I definitely feel that. Um, so particularly, I'm I'm stuck on the the timing that you said that you started DJing. Where yeah, 10, so 10, like it was like 2010, 2011. So I was still in high school and like right, I was just doing my things. Yeah, you uh, what do you have to say about like that particular moment in music where 2010s? You know, Drake had just dropped his um, best I ever had the year before. Yeah, um, I I wasn't really on the Drake train too much back then. Um, like I was, like I said, I was like pretty into like electronic music, believe it or not. Right, man. like even like dubstep. Like dubstep was like big back then. Yeah, you know? and like I think when Skrillex came out, that's when I started stepping away from it because yeah. dubstep had this original kind of thing where uh it was like dub plates like i don't know how to explain it. it was more um 
like rhythm like how do i explain this right. like it was like roots like reggae like not reggae but it's how just, reggae is like a continual beat that can loop for it just wasn't you know. all like electronic hip hop and what i'm saying is like when skrillex came out i just remember i started stepping away from that bit because it was so like oh, wait, wait, wait. like you know what yeah. i mean like it was getting like crazy and i just i just like the dub plates like kind of I, I was just doing that and like house music like just like kind of vibey stuff right. not like your edm like like i don't know really like, yeah so i'm actually very shocked that you say that because uh we haven't had this conversation yeah, before yeah. but i can say that at a period of time i actually really got into dubstep yeah, and I, like I can that. argue that it was right around Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites by Skrillex. Yeah, exactly. Around that era, and then, you know, went on to listen to Bangarang, yeah. Devil's Den, like a whole bunch of records back then where, um, I don't know, it was the super... And I remember, of course, back in that particular time where um, Skrillex was catching heat for the super computerized sounds. Yeah. And well, that's what it is when you're like pioneering something when you're like and you shave half your head yeah well i mean sunny like that's his name right yeah, sunny, like, yeah. he's extremely talented man like you can see the stuff he's producing nowadays yeah um he actually had a track just come out recently with uh like ty dolla sign and kanye yeah. so that was really sick yeah Even, like the jack U stuff and like the stuff he did with justin bieber like yeah i was gonna come say on, man. like the guy's sick but I'll, all i'm saying at the time I just started to step away from it because it was like, I liked it for a year. Like, I did like the album. I know what you mean. But then I just, I just transitioned, man. Yeah, exactly. I just transitioned. And uh, I bought actual turntables, like vinyl records. Yeah, vinyl records. That just changed everything. Yeah, that's that's what's up. Honestly, like even um, nowadays, like in terms of music quality, just the quality of, of CDQ back then. And, you know, mm. you said CDJ is what you were. Yeah, CDJ is like the... Uh, electronic like turntable right okay that's yeah. the the turntable itself yeah, but um yeah. I, I just mean in terms of the, the quality in terms of music back then how you can see apple nowadays trying to attempt the lossless um lossless audio and yeah like flack or whatever yeah exactly and yeah. incorporating like dolby atmos into you know uh -huh. actually being able to listen to it on your phone now uh -huh. on apple music yeah. um i don't know if you use apple music or spotify spotify yeah. you spotify but yeah. apple apple they started to implement that on certain songs where it promotes it as lossless audio where they're trying to get back into you know making sure that the, mm -hmm. the original audio quality is there yeah that's a really like um that debate has been going on excuse me that debate's been going on for years like the, the slight difference in quality between like a 320 kbps like mp3 right. <laughs> and then like a wave file then a flak file and like only until recently like i actually really noticed how amazingly better flack is mm -hmm. but like realistically like everything is like mp3s are like the consumer digital format like that's just that's what that's what everyone li like that's just kind of what it is and like that's my whole library man like i have wave files too but i do recently have downloaded some flack files mm -hmm. And with my headphones on, listening to it, like I was really, really blown away, like right. the quality. But then again, like I'm not here to like convert all my yeah. Like it's just like I appreciate it, and like it's an art, and it's like it's cool, like that, that that's available. But like you're not gonna go realistic overhaul setting, like, your old yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just I'm rambling out at this point. I don't no, know, no, but, it's fine. Like, no, you know what I mean. I, uh, dude, that's why I'm here to yeah. keep us on track. Yeah, so. Yeah. Let's um particularly about um you know your coming up coming of age you know starting yeah. the year that you started um alongside audio quality at that particular time and how you made sure you know you're always picking up um the right vinyls making sure that your audio was pristine yeah. whenever you yeah, were playing yeah. it yeah. um that particularly you know if I fast forward or I guess in the sense rewind back to mm -hmm. where I was in that time uh, that was when we were running LimeWire I think. Yeah, for sure. Was that I was that downloading time? things yeah. on LimeWire, and uh, I'm pretty sure I was just even YouTube ripping. That's what I was doing too. Right, and like the quality was poo. Yeah, it can was. Can I say shit? Can I yeah, curse? Go ahead, man. Okay. It was shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was pretty it shit. Was I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I mean, when you talk about MP3s, that was kind of how I initially first started learning about, you know, different file types, things of those yeah. sorts. Through the lime wires of the world and the all the Soldier Boy tracks. Oh my god, lime wire. You Soldier know. Boy's a little finesser too. Yeah. You know what he used to do back in the day? He would dead ass take um because of course that was back when Fifty Cent, Britney Spears, all that. Oh, I know. You'd be downloading like you'd be downloading a track the song and then all of a sudden you. you out of nowhere man that's genius level marketing his verses recently with bow wow wow man that yeah. guy's goaded i'm telling you like 
Soldier Boy is is really up there as like I top like mm-hmm. dog in in the rap game of like in terms of like influence and just like uh, originator pioneer like yeah and he's still got the sauce like he's drip he's just drip yeah. is like it's still there you know I wish he didn't have to you know really go about himself you know saying no I did this like I wish people gave him his credit but yeah no him. but that's like part of his that's like part of the- like his whole thing like I I like that he's reminding people and like you know how this rap game is man like the hip hop is like it's just well Kyle's no trying rules. to say sometimes no you gotta rules. remind niggas you yeah. know what I'm saying <laughs> there's no rules to this you know yeah, like it's yeah. a living breathing thing and like I can't really explain it but guys like him he's just like he's just holding it down still man yeah it's you just, you don't ever forget them because they will constantly remind you although some people may argue you know legends may not do this but they'll remind you why they deserve their flowers and for sure somebody being able to do that whether it's through them just telling you or through their art in itself yeah hey man you got to pay respects to that at the very least for sure like shout out kanye too man like <laughs> everyone calls the guy crazy i think he's visionary like i love like that he has no filter to be honest because it's like yeah that's that's like what like rap is all about i feel like hip-hop and stuff too it's like kind of just saying what it is and like either relate or you don't you mm-hmm. know and like anyway i just wanted to shout out kanye because yeah. like i know a lot of people like yeah they just call the guy crazy and i just i mean he, he kind of is but crazy is like crazy is good that's what I'm-